derivation of wave equation. We started this module by considering a stretch string and applying a force and releasing. Here the string vibrates and we found that using the displacement equation we can calculate the displacement of the string at any given point. To find this displacement equation which is unique for each problem we have to understand the wave equation and the solution of the wave equation. So let's learn those concepts in detail. Derivation of wave equation has been asked in some K2 exams. So we discussed each step in the derivation in detail. We have a vibrating string of length L and a displacement function is given by u of x comma t. Assume that first the string has a mass per unit length equal to m and second tension t caused by the stretching is constant and sufficiently greater in magnitude. Third the vibrations of the strings are transverse. Considering these assumptions, we will check the effect of the force during the vibration. Through that, we derive the wave equation. To know the expression for force, we need to identify the direction and magnitude of the force. For that, we consider a small element in the ring and studied the effect of the force due to the small displacement. Let PQ be a small element on the string with length delta x. Let the horizontal coordinate of p be x and that of q be x plus delta x. At each point on the string it experiences a constant tension that is the points p and q are in tension but the direction of the tension is different. Suppose that theta 1 be the angle between the direction of tension and the horizontal line at the point p and theta 2 be the angle between the direction of tension and the horizontal line at point q. Since we are interested in the displacement function u, we will consider the effect of the force in the direction of u. That means we are going to see the effect force on the vertical direction. Now tension at the point p has a horizontal component and a vertical component. Also this force makes an angle theta 1 with the horizontal axis. Since direction of the tension is downwards, the vertical component of tension at this point is negative t sin theta 1. Similarly, the vertical component of tension at the point q is upward direction. So the vertical component of tension at this point is t sin theta 2. Now we got the force exerted by the string at vertical directions. Let f u be the net force in the direction of u. Then we can write the net force as the sum of these forces. We get the net force f u equal to t sin theta 2 minus t sin theta 1. Also we know that sin theta equal to cos theta into tan theta. For small values of theta cos theta tends to 1 and sin theta will be equal to tan theta. Now if the oscillations are small, the angle theta1 and theta2 becomes small. Hence sin theta1 equal to tan theta1 and sin theta2 equal to tan theta2. Therefore the net force becomes f u equal to t tan theta2 minus t tan theta1. We know that if a curve makes an angle theta with the positive x axis, then tan theta will be the slope of the tangent. Also slope of the tangent can be defined using the derivative. That means the tan theta is equal to the derivative of the function. Here our function is the displacement function u of x comma t. So the derivative that is the slope of the tangent can be taken as the partial derivative of the function with respect to x. That is tan theta is equal to dou by dou x of u of x comma t. Now for point P with horizontal coordinate x, the derivative which is equal to the slope is given by dou by dou x of u of x comma t at x. That is tan theta 1 is equal to dou by dou x of u of x comma t at x. Now for point Q, the horizontal coordinate x plus delta x, the derivative which is equal to the slope is given by dou by dou x of u of x comma t at x plus delta x. That is tan theta 2 is equal to dou by dou x of 
u of x comma t at x plus delta x. Substituting the tan values in the expression for fu, we get fu equal to t into dou u of x comma t by dou x at x plus delta x minus t into dou u of x comma t by dou x at x. t is considered as a constant. So we can take t outside and we get fu equal to t into dou u of x comma t by dou x at x plus delta x minus dou u of x comma t by dou x at x which implies fu by t is equal to dou u of x comma t by dou x at x plus delta x minus dou u of x comma t by dou x at x. Note that the first term is given at x plus delta x and the second term is given at the point x. In the figure, we consider two points x and x plus delta x. Actually, delta x is a very small number. So, x plus delta x approaches to x as delta x approaches 0. As x plus delta x tends to x, to find dou u of x comma t by dou x at x plus delta x, we express it as a series expansion. For that, we use the Taylor series. We know from calculus module 1 that Taylor series expansion of a function f of x at a point a as f of x equal to f of a plus f dash of a by 1 factorial into x minus a plus f double dash of a by 2 factorial into x minus a the whole square plus etc. Now we are going to express the function dou u of x comma t by dou x at x plus delta x as a Taylor series expansion. Here dou u of x comma t by dou x at x plus delta x is a function of x plus delta x and t. So we can write capital F of x plus delta x comma t is equal to dou u of x comma t by dou x at x plus delta x. Now we expand capital F of x plus delta x comma t using Taylor series. Since we want to know the value of the partial derivative when x plus delta x tends to x, we replace a in the general expression of Taylor series by x and x in the Taylor series is replaced by x plus delta x and f of x in the Taylor series is replaced by capital F of x plus delta x comma t. Also f of a is replaced by capital F of x plus delta x comma t at x f dash of a is replaced by dou by dou x of capital F of x plus delta x comma t at x and so on. Hence, the Taylor series expansion of capital X of x plus delta x comma t is equal to capital F of x plus delta x comma t equal to capital F of x plus delta x comma t at x plus 1 by 1 factorial into dou by dou x of capital F of x plus delta x comma t at x into x plus delta x minus x plus 1 by 2 factorial into dou square by dou x square of f of x plus delta x comma t at x into x plus delta x minus x the whole square plus etc. Here capital F of x plus delta x comma t at x denote the value of capital F at x. That is, and dou by dou x of capital F of x plus delta x comma t at x denote the value of the partial derivative of capital X at x and so on. Substituting capital F of x plus delta x comma t equal to dou u of x comma t by dou x of x plus delta x then dou u of x comma t by dou x at x plus delta x equal to dou by dou x of u of x comma t at x plus 1 by 1 factorial into dou by dou x of dou u x of t by dou x at x into x plus delta x minus x plus 1 by 2 factorial into dou square by dou x square into dou u of x comma t by dou x at x into x plus delta x minus x the whole square plus etc. Which is equal to dou u of x comma t by dou x at x plus dou by dou x of dou u of x comma t by dou x at x into delta x plus 1 by 2 factorial into 
dou square by dou x square into dou u of x comma t by dou x at x into delta x the whole square plus etc. As delta x tends to 0, its higher powers tends to 0. So we can neglect all the terms containing the higher powers of delta x. So we get dou u of x comma t by dou x at x plus delta x equal to dou u of x comma t by dou x at x plus dou by dou x of dou u of x comma t by dou x at x into delta x. Now we substitute the new result in the expression for net force we get f u by t equal to dou u of x comma t by dou x at x plus dou by dou x of dou u of x comma t by dou x at x into delta x minus dou u of x comma t by dou x at x. First and third term gets cancelled. So we get f u by t is equal to dou by dou x of dou u of x comma t by dou x at x into delta x or 1 by t into f u equal to dou square u of x comma t by dou x square into delta x. Here we got a new expression for net force. To proceed further we use the Newton's law of motion. By Newton's law force equal to mass into acceleration. Now again consider the section PQ. Recall that the length of the section PQ is taken as delta x. Also we have taken the mass per unit length that is the density as m. So mass of the element PQ is capital M equal to m into delta s. But for small delta x the length delta s becomes small and it will coincide with the horizontal displacement delta x. So we take delta x instead of delta s. Thus mass capital M equal to m delta x. Also the acceleration is the second derivative of the displacement function with respect to time. That is a equal to dou square u of x comma t by dou t square. Therefore by Newton's law the net force F u can be written as F u equal to capital M into A which is equal to M delta x into dou square u of x comma t by dou t square. We already have the expression 1 by t into F u equal to dou square u of x comma t by dou x square into delta x. From these two equations we get 1 by t into M delta x into dou square u of x comma t by dou t square equal to dou square u of x comma t by dou x square into delta x. Delta x cancel and we get m into dou square u of x comma t by dou t square equal to t into dou square u of x comma t by dou x square or dou square u of x comma t by dou t square is equal to capital T by m into dou square u of x comma t by dou x square. In this equation we have the constant term capital T by m. Since capital T is the tension, its unit is kilogram meter per second square. And m is the mass per unit length, so its unit is kilogram per meter. So the unit of T by m is meter square per second square. We know that the dimension of velocity is meter per second. So meter square per second square is the dimension of square of velocity, which means the dimension of T by m and the dimension of square of velocity are the same. So we can equate t by m to the square of velocity. Let the wave velocity be c. So t by m is equal to c square. Substituting in the wave equation we obtain dou square u of x comma t by dou t square equal to c square into dou square u of x comma t by dou x square or dou square u of x comma t by dou x square is equal to 1 by c square into dou square u of x comma t by dou t square. Finally, we obtain the partial differential equation. This equation is known as the one dimensional wave equation. For easy notation, we use u for u of x comma t. So the wave equation can be written as dou square u by dou x square is equal to 1 by c square into dou square u by dou t square. In some problems, the displacement function may be given as y of x comma t instead of u of x comma t. In such cases, we just replace u with y in the wave equation.